How's it guys, this is Davey FPL and welcome back to the Fantasy Premier League video here on my channel. Now in this video, I'll be taking you guys to my very own team selection for the upcoming Double Game Week 20. So yes, Double Game Week 20, a quick reminder, this will be happening on Friday night, the deadline that is, or morning, kind of maybe Saturday even, wherever you guys are around the world. Now even though we do have a Friday night deadline, I'll still be doing a deadline stream, so make sure that you guys are there for the most up-to-date team as possible. Now the reason I'm saying most up-to-date is obviously the Double Game Week 20 deadline holds a lot of secrets towards it. Double Game Week 21, Double Game Week 22, all those are going to be confirmed by the deadline, hopefully. So therefore I'll be running through all the most up-to-date news as possible in that deadline stream. But don't worry, I'll be going over all the possible scenarios in this specific video a little bit later on after I talk about the Double Game Week 19 team review. So yes, even though Double Game Week 19 has not even finished yet, we still do have the Fulham vs Chelsea game coming up tomorrow. While we add it, comment down below how many options do you have in that Thursday night game? Who do you need to go massive for you? Me personally, it's going to be Andreas Captaincy. Hopefully he bangs and outperforms you Mitrovic captainers. So like I just mentioned, the Game Week 19 review is going to come first. Then I'll be going over my transfer plan and Game Week 20 team selection, where spoiler alert, Triple Camsy has spoken about right at the end. So that's something you guys are interested in. Sit back, relax, and let's get straight into it. So let's go over the Double Game Week 19 team. It seems like an eternity since FPL has been back into our lives. But I hope you guys have been enjoying the other cup competitions. Now bottom right hand side, you guys can see unfortunately a red arrow at the current moment. Hasn't been the best of starts to the new year in terms of FPL. And we're currently sitting around that 370k mark. But don't worry, hopefully these Chelsea options, these Fulham options are going to come to the rescue. And a couple of holes might actually get a green arrow. But let me know what you guys are currently on for Double Game Week 19. Has it been a green arrow, a red arrow, and where are you currently sitting at? Then finally, bottom right hand side, coming up later, is going to be that one free transfer and 3.8 million left in the bank. But now going on to our actual Double Game Week 19 team review, as we always do, going to start off with the bench. We had one benching headache that actually came in in the form of Kieran Trippier, and what does he go and do? Gets a clean sheet against league leaders Arsenal, and also two bonus points. So yes, I should have actually started him over Cancelo, who we'll talk about shortly, but he even has a chance of coming off the bench if Mason Mount doesn't feature tomorrow. Other than that though, we have Danny Ward with only a two-point appearance, unless his defense has gone off a cliff, so hopefully he can get a few clean sheets coming up. We then have Green with only a one-point appearance, and then finally Patterson, who has a long-term injury, so wishing him the best on his recovery. But going into our starting 11, and hopefully Kepa can manage to get us a few save points, I'm actually hoping he gets some save points, and not really a clean sheet, because I have Captain Andreas Pereira. But in terms of the first game, Chelsea aren't playing the best football at the moment. And if having Kepa and Danny Ward as a backup, probably won't lead to too many points in the future game weeks. But nevertheless, he should be between the sticks for the majority of Chelsea games, with Mendy out injured. Then going into our back three, the first player is going to be Jao Cancelo. Now what needs to be said about Jao Cancelo that hasn't been said? Absolute tears when he was subbed at halftime, therefore blocking the Trippier clean sheet. Now don't you know what's happened with Cancelo and Pep Guardiola, it might just be that he's fallen out of favour, or there might be something behind his kind of fitness level, something like that, but definitely not performing at his peak. Now, this was quite annoying because a Man City actually did keep a clean sheet against Chelsea, and if he just was on the pitch for about 15 more minutes, we would have had those clean sheet points. But nevertheless, I guess it was kind of a risk starting him because he hadn't played many minutes previously, but I was at least expecting him to get 60 minutes against Chelsea. The next up is one of our heroes of Double Game Week 19, an actual transfer in pre-deadline. We brought in Luke Shaw for a massive 15-pointer. So I was like expecting a goal and a clean sheet and three bonus points. Probably not. Might have hoped for the clean sheet, but it was quite a nice fixture against Bournemouth at home. Now what has made this move kind of even better is the fact that Diego Delot was subbed last night due to kind of a precaution. So therefore Luke Shaw looks like the best option to get in defensively. So if you guys are looking for maybe a United defender to bring in for Game Week 20 and the Double Game Weeks coming up, Luke Shaw is probably the man to look at. And then finally, our benching kind of headache in our defensive department was Ben White versus Kieran Trippier. Yes, we actually did get it wrong at the end of the day. One point between them, Trippier outperforming Ben White. But at least the logic of an Arsenal clean sheet was still going to be there. So overall, if you guys do look at my defensive department, we still do have Kepa coming up. Not expecting too much from him, but with Cancelo, super annoying that he was subbed at halftime. Negating the clean sheet, having Kieran Trippier also on our bench. But now let's go into our attacking department and going to start off with the midfielders and our Man City assets are yet again disappointing us. Kevin De Bruyne with only a three-point appearance. So don't you know what's happened with KDB over this kind of restart from the World Cup till now has played about three games, no attack returns, but the stats are still looking pretty strong. So that's super annoying, similar to kind of Darwin, the stats are looking good, but the FPL points aren't kind of flowing in. So if you double game week 20 is where the hall's going to lie. Now the big debate at the restart was going for Mo Salah versus going for Kevin De Bruyne, so we really do need the Belgian to kickstart his season. But he's not going anywhere in terms of our kind of transfer plan, lots of managers are looking to bring him in, so we're going to sit tight and have this triple up. 
Then the next option is going to be Rashford, a play in massive form at the current moment. Got a goal kind of late into that Bournemouth game. Was a great kind of pre-assist from Luke Shaw to Bruno Fernandes. A cross goal to Marcus Rashford, who kind of had a nice tap in. Now he also scored two goals coming off the bench last night, so the form is red hot. And while the fixtures might not be that great, I still really like this United team. Now, if you guys don't have a Marcus Rashford, pretty sure most of you do. Probably got him in on your Game Week 17 wildcard team, but if you don't, I really would suggest getting him in. Then next up is kind of the hope of double Game Week 19, Andres Pereira. Now, if you guys don't know what happened in the first game, Andres Pereira was substituted on the 58th minute. If he was literally substituted a minute and 30 seconds later, he would have had three points double to six, and therefore even if he only had the appearance points against Chelsea, he would have matched his colleague Mitrovic. So I was super annoyed at that, but let's just see what happens against Chelsea. But if he doesn't outperform Mitrovic, I'm going to come back to that first game in double game week 19 and just look on it with absolute tears. But nevertheless, it is how it is sometimes. And that was the first time this season that Andres Pereira has been substituted before 60 minutes. I guess the only hope that I do have for this Chelsea game is that with Mitrovic suspended, Andres Pereira might be on penalties. So hopefully we do get a few against Kepa. I'm going to rope in Mason Mount here because he also does have this fixture. Missed the first one through an injury. Actually had a small knock in training, but he should be back after playing in the cup competitions. Now against Fulham, I've always said that Fulham are kind of one of the worst defences at the moment. Have improved slightly, but I still think that Chelsea could get something against them. Let's just hope that Mason Mount starts or doesn't feature at all because if he doesn't, I will get Trippier off the bench. Let me know in the comments down below. If you do have Mason Mount, even if you captain him, what's the scenario? Do you want him to play? Do you not? Because who's your vice captain and who's your first on your bench? Then our final midfield option is going to be Martinelli. A little bit of a disappointing performance from an Arsenal attacking point of view. No, not at the end of the day against Newcastle. Now Martinelli, I thought, had a pretty good game. Definitely a better game than Saka, who struggled a little bit towards the latter stages of that game, but both blanked at the end of the fixture. Now Arsenal do have some nice fixtures coming up. A double game week as well, then game week 23. So Martinelli will still be in my side, as he is still quite cheap. Now the final department to go over is going to be our forward department and only Haaland to start things off with a massive two points. Yes, he managed to blank, was pretty happy that he did because the camps, he was still pretty high on him even though he only had a single game week. Now he actually did have some chances against Chelsea but fortunately he did end up blanking. Sorry for you captainers. Now talking about blanks, let's go over the king of the blank. It's going to be Darwin Nunes. One point, got a yellow card in that fixture after arguing with the referee. Probably started arguing with him after the ref tuned his finishing. But yes, what's there to be said about Darwin that hasn't? Can't hit the back of a barn. Finishing's all over the place, but he still is getting all those big chances. So super annoying F4 option to own because I don't think we want to transfer him out because of that big chance threat. So if he actually finishes a Premier League goal, not a cup competition goal. But Darwin's going to kind of wrap up our starting 15. 44 points, hopefully some more to come on Thursday. Fulham taking on Chelsea at home. Let's hope that Andreas gets a hattie. Let me know in the comments down below, as I mentioned, how you guys got on double game week 19 and what's the rank looking like? Now before we get on to the actual transfer plan or the team selection for the upcoming Double Game Week 20, I want to give you guys some insight into Double Game Week 21 and Double Game Week 22. So let's talk about Double Game Week 22 because it's quite a lot shorter than Double Game Week 21. Basically there was a newspaper article that came out about a potential Double Game Week for United in Double Game Week 22. Now the fixtures there potentially were going to be Crystal Palace at home and Leeds at home I do believe. It's a really massive Double Game Week if that does come about. Now because the newspaper and other kind of fan forums are posted this news, the chance of a double game week 22 does look likely, but it's not 100% confirmed yet. So that's one of the things we're kind of waiting for pre game week 20's deadline. Hopefully we do get this news because that double game week looks absolutely spicy. Now in terms of double game week 21, this uh, kind of double game week is going to happen a little bit shorter, obviously in kind of one week's time. The time for kind of official announcements is kind of closing rapidly. Hopefully this does come out before game week 20, maybe even comes out as you guys are watching this video, but we should get news about a potential double game week 21. Now the teams that could feature here include Brighton, Liverpool. Liverpool could actually face Chelsea back to back. Would be incredible if that does happen. But there are a few fixtures according to Ben Krellen that could fit into Double Gaming 21. But as I said, the time window is kind of becoming shorter and shorter. So hopefully we get news before the Gaming 20s deadline. Now in terms of my kind of transfer plan, I'm going to speak about Double Gaming 22 because that has a little bit more of a likelihood. We have had a newspaper article about it. Whereas in terms of Double Gaming 21, I'll touch on some fixtures. But unfortunately, because it is a rumor, I can't really go on confirmed transfers. So just keep that in mind when I do talk about my transfer plan as this might actually change. Now before going on to our actual Double Gaming 20 transfers or a couple of variations of transfers that we could perform, I want to give you guys the context about the current Double Gaming 20 team selection. Now if you guys did watch the transfer plan, I'm going to wrap through this kind of team selection pretty quickly because in that video I went in depth into a lot more of these selections. So bottom right hand side, just a little bit of context there, one free transfer, 3.8 million in the bank, so a lot of options to potentially upgrade. Now, first of all, starting on our bench, we've got Danny Ward, Ben White, Greenwood, and Patterson. The only debates to be had there, I'm going to talk about Kepa right now, is Kepa versus Danny Ward. 
Then yes, Ben White could be an option that I want to bring in, but I just don't really favor him in that North Thunder derby. But if you guys do have to play Ben White, I could actually play Ben White over Andreas Pereira if I make no transfers. But I guess a little bit of an underrated debate to go over is going to be Kepa versus Danny Ward. A lot of us are discussing the triple captaincy, what transfers to make. But me personally, I'm thinking about who to start between Kepa and Danny Ward. Now, I would have started Ward 100% if this was kind of pre-World Cup because Leicester's defensive form was red hot, whereas now they're playing really badly. But then again, Chelsea aren't playing well at all, so it's a little bit of a tough debate to go here. But I guess Nottingham Forest away is the easier fixture. But let me in the comments down below who you guys are playing at the current moment. Currently, I'm going to be on Kepa as I trust the Chelsea defense slightly more. Now going on to our back line, no brainers here. The Man City and United defenses having the double game weeks, 100% going to start these two options. Then obviously Trippi has Fulham at home, which is a great fixture. Then moving on to Midford Department, got De Bruyne and Rashford with the double game week. We then have Andreas Pereira, who's kind of the weak link in our starting 11. And I'll look to kind of correct that with my transfer plan. We then have Mason Mount against Crystal Palace, all kind of eyes on that Thursday fixture, because if he looks good, I'm perfectly fine playing him. But if he doesn't, he could be a downgrade for funds. Then finally, we have Martelli against uh, Spurs in the North London derby. It's an away game for Arsenal, which is a little bit of a hindrance, but they are playing great football at the moment and definitely the favoured team in this fixture. Then finally, going on to our forward department, Erling Haaland going to slap the camps on him right now. We'll discuss triple camps at the end of this video, as mentioned earlier on. Then also, Darwin Nunes against Brighton away. Tough game on paper, but Brighton haven't kept a clean sheet in a while. And with all those big chances floating around Darwin, hopefully he actually finishes one. So now you guys can see our starting 11 currently. I've got the Cam C on Erling Haaland. We'll discuss the triple Cam C after my transfer plan. So please wait for that at the end of the video. But now that you guys have seen my current team selection, one free transfer, 3.8 million in the bank. So a big upgrade could potentially be made. Now there actually is a load of transfers I could make with that 3.8 million. Should have seen that coming with that massive amount in the bank. A lot of routes that I could potentially go for. Now the first thing I want to talk to you guys about is going to be the hits. So currently there are a few situations that I do take a minus 4, minus 8. Haven't really stretched to a minus 12, but that could come about if you do get news about double game week 21 and game week 22. But there's a few chances that I could do for free. And the first one I want to talk to you guys about is going to be Sam Greenwood out. So taking Greenwood out would obviously see myself switching to a 3 up front. That would be a 3-4-3 three, three, or 4-3-3, three, three, whatever I want to go for. And there are a few options that I could actually look at. Now the favorite in terms of my own opinion is kind of completing that Man United triple up, double game week 20, double game week 22 on the horizon. If that is confirmed, 100% Martial is probably a play I'd look at. Now you guys can see they have a double game week 20, then have the Arsenal fixture next week, not the best fixture in the world, then Crystal Pilots with a potential double. Now yes, I am slightly concerned about Martial. Ten Hag has said that he's not the most fit player in the world at the current moment, can't play 90 minutes, but I guess 60 minutes is good enough if he plays every fixture. Now added to that, Vachost is going to be signing for United as we speak probably, so you could offer some competition in that center forward position. But to me, this transfer kind of makes sense. If they do get a double game week, I want to bring another United attacker, have good fixtures on paper, and that's how this transfer could be kind of a no-brainer. Other options I could look at are Callum Wilson, but I just can't put my eyes off that United attack. But now let's shift ourselves to a different route, still looking at that United attack, but it's going to be upgrading Andres Pereira. Now, yes, this would make my bench kind of weaker, and Andres Pereira has a confirmed fixture in Game Week 25, when a lot of teams do blank. But let's prioritize the Game Weeks currently, and that's going to be an upgrade of Andres Pereira to Anthony. So what this kind of comes down to is, do I think Anthony or Martial is a better asset to get in? Yes, Anthony is slightly more expensive, but with 3.8 million in the bank, I can afford it. So same fixtures as Martial, I just think that Anthony's minutes are slightly more confirmed. He did actually miss the last Premier League game, but I think that was because he was involved in a car accident, which he seems to have recovered from. So yes, this move, I won't lie to you guys, this was the first move that I thought about going to Double Gaming 20, as I think the midfielder options are a lot better than the forwards. But would I do this move if Double Gaming 22 isn't confirmed? I probably would, as I do think it might be confirmed after the deadline. So those two moves that you guys have just seen on screen, Martial versus Anthony, it's going to come down to it. Let me know in the comments down below who you prefer out of those two. But having taken this kind of no-brain inverted commas moves, free transfer moves, let's go into some more exciting moves, which are all going to involve taking a hit. Now, before we take your hit, there's going to be one option that I probably want to bring into my side, and that's going to be Harry Kane. You guys can see Arsenal Man City in double game week 20, then as Fulham away, great fixture on paper, but unfortunately Man City at home in game week 22. But Harry Kane is on massive form this season. Even though Spurs aren't playing a great brand of football, Harry Kane is still racking up those FPL points, and that's why it seems like a no-brainer in terms of a premium. Now, if I was to bring in Harry Kane, there are a few routes that I could go for. I could downgrade Haaland, but probably won't do that. Could upgrade uh, Darwin Nunes, but probably won't do that as well. And therefore, I would upgrade Sam Greenwood. Now, know what you guys are thinking. How am I going to find the funds to upgrade Sam Greenwood to Harry Kane? Well, that's where the hit transfers actually take place. Now, the next transfer, I'm going to kind of detach from the hit or the current plan I'm talking about because I think a lot of us are looking at downgrading Cancelo. So yes, he is involved in this kind of a trio of transfers I'm going to be making, but he could be a transfer by himself. 
So the reason most people are actually taking out Cancelo is the fact that he's lost his starting position, doesn't look up to scratch in terms of fitness, and it seems like Pep Guardiola isn't too fond of him. Now yes, this could actually change, let's just say that he starts the game against United as a great game, Pep will probably favour him again as he is a quality footballer. But right now his form is not there and just think back to the reason we bought Cancelo at the start of the wildcard and that was because he was expected to play every single game. He wasn't worth the 7 million in terms of attacking threat, his stats have gone downhill this season, so therefore now that his expected minutes are gone, he's not worth that price tag. So options that you guys could replace him with, I think John Stones is the best Man City replacement, there are some other assets, yes you could go for a Lewis, he's super cheap but I probably wouldn't go there, I think that John Stones is the kind of sensible option. But if you don't want to go for a Man City option, you don't think they're going to keep clean sheets, that sort of thing. Another option that I'm potentially looking at is going to be a Doherty. Now I know what you guys are thinking, Man City in the next four game weeks twice is not a good plan to go for. But I generally think of Doherty as an attacker at his cheap price point. So yes, the fixtures don't look great on paper, but I guess you could always bench him in game week 22 when they do face Man City at home. Now I guess the reason I'm going for Doherty is because I can't really afford anyone more. If I could afford a Stones in this transfer plan, I would go for it. But right now I need a cheaper option, and that's going to be Doherty at 4.5 or 4.6 million. So that's going to give us a few extra million in the bank, but not exactly enough. And that's why the last move is also integral. It's Mason Mount downgraded to Almiron from Newcastle. So with this transfer, I do have a few extra 0.1s in the bank, but I also need to do this downgrade in terms of the budget. So Mason Mount, not the best AFL pick at the end of the day, just kind of had him for that double game week that Chelsea did have. But I guess in game week 22, he also has Fulham at home. But then you look at Almiron, a player that's in great form, kind of hasn't really scored as many as his first half of the season. But Newcastle looking great, and I think that Almiron will continue to tick along. So at his cheaper price point, you're paying for a Fulham at home game, great fixture on paper. Then there's Crystal Palace away, West Ham at home, not the best games in the world. But with the way Newcastle are kind of playing, they look like a fixture-proof team. So this would therefore allow me to bring in Harry Kane, i therefore be going for Doherty in the defensive department and Almiron in the midfield department. Now this would be from minus 8, only one free transfer in the bank, two extras, take us to a minus 8 hit, which I might be actually fine with as everyone seems to be taking a hit for game week 20. But you guys can let me know in the comments down below, there are obviously a lot of transfers I could also make, could bring in Anthony, could bring in Martial, could actually downgrade Cancelo from minus 4 it on his own, there's just so many routes I could actually go for. But I will say that the most obvious moves are probably the one that brings in a United attacker, either Martial or Anthony, just depends on who I want to go for. But let me know in the comments down below what transfers you guys prefer and what transfers are you guys actually making for your Game Week 20 team selection. Now the final talking point I want to go over is probably the biggest one of Double Game Week 20, the biggest debate to be had over on FPL Twitter, over on any FPL community, is are you triple captaining Erling Haaland? Now obviously the fixtures aren't that great for the game week 20 double for Man City. They have United away, Spurs at home, two teams that defend adequately well. But I guess Man City are quite a fixture proof team. Now currently in terms of the triple camp, see I am on it. I haven't activated the chip yet but I plan to probably before game week 20 is dead down. However, the game tonight against Southampton is going to be integral. I want to see how Erling Haaland's looking, how Man City are looking. And hopefully he comes out injury free in tonight's League Cup game. But yes, I do plan to actually use the triple camp, see, and the reason I'm going for it is because of expected minutes. This has been said over on FPL Twitter, if you guys watch other FPL content creators, it's been a kind of a debate that's been well spoken about, but basically the reason I'm captioning him is because he's expected to play both of these two fixtures. If you guys look at the fixtures, they're happening tonight, then they play the kickoff on Saturday at lunchtime, then they play again on Tuesday before playing again on the weekend. So in terms of kind of rest time, there's enough for Erling Haaland, I do believe, I think that he should start both of these two games. Alvarez is still coming back from the World Cup, has been integrated slightly, but is still coming back to the full team, and that's why Erling Haaland should play both of these two fixtures. Now in game week 23, yes, they do have the Aston Villa at home game, a better fixture on paper, but there might be some rotation there now that the Prem and the Cup competitions are advancing. Now another debate to be had is that that game week 22, if you guys want to triple captain Rashford, if it is confirmed, yes, I do agree, that's a great opportunity to go for, and that's why if we do get news about that before game week 20's deadline, I might actually rather triple captain Rashford in that game week. I think the thing at the end of the day is that do you want to captain Erling Haaland or not? If you do want to go for him, I think that you guys should personally. I think he's a great f ball asset, hardly blanks, and that's why this season I want to triple captain the most consistent option. But to be honest, I'm not kind of swayed on this. It's a little bit annoying to not triple captain an option that you 100% on, and I'd probably say I'm about 70% keen on the triple captain for double game week 20. But let me know what you guys think about this. We can debate it in the comments down below. I always like debating you guys on your decisions, and maybe you can convince me not to triple captain him and go for another asset. But as mentioned early on, please make sure that you guys are in the deadline stream to make sure that I do triple captain Erling Haaland or just make sure that you're there for the confirmed transfers. But I'll also be posting them on my Discord server, link in the description below, or my Twitter page. This is basically wrap up the video guys. Hope you did enjoy it. Please don't forget to like if you did and subscribe if you haven't subscribed yet. I'll we'll see you guys for the deadline stream on Friday, so please make sure that you guys are there and hope to see you in the comments. But I'm going to start off with FPL and I'm out. Cheers, bye.